an aircraft, a ship, and a massive cargo truck all in one. Welcome to the largest, most ambitious plane in decades. The magnificent future of cargo delivery and fittingly named the Liberty Lifter X, X meaning experimental. This tribrid plane can operate in the air, on the seas, and on land. A level of versatility owed to an interesting phenomenon known as the wing and ground effect. The result of this is an airplane with a 50% more effective range, which allows for global, cost-effective transport of huge amounts of payload, including hundreds of people, helicopters, rocket systems, and M1 Abrams tanks. This would mean more deliveries for the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Army, seeing as it can operate in all of their respective natural habitats, which is exactly what was expected of the revolutionary machine that is the Liberty Lifter X. The Liberty Lifter X is a half-plane, half-boat concept from the U.S. military's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. Its development was launched in mid-2022 under the Liberty Lifter program, tasked with developing a long-range, low-cost transport using the idea of a maritime ground-effect vehicle, in some ways similar to the Soviet KM Ekranoplan, but far more advanced. DARPA launched the program with an interest in a plane that could carry large, heavy cargo by skimming over water in ground effect mode, but is also capable of operating at mid-altitudes of up to 10,000 feet out of ground effect mode. Such a vehicle would be able to land and take off from the water, enabling it to combine the speed of airlift with the efficiency of sea lift. Recently, DARPA chose two finalist manufacturers to build their prototypes, and with that, the program entered its design phase. One finalist is General Atomics, partnered with Maritime Applied Physics Corporation, whose prototyping could cost as much as $29 million. Their concept uses 12 turboshaft engines to power an aircraft with a mid-wing twin hull. This hull design particularly gives their offering the advantage of loading and unloading cargo twice as fast. The design also looks more like DARPA's original concepts than the design of the other finalist, which is Boeing subsidiary Aurora Flight Sciences, partnered with Lido subsidiary Gibbs & Cox and with Recon Craft. Boeing's design is a monohull with a high wing, primarily relying on eight turbine engines. It is more conventional with eight forward-facing propellers, a single fuselage, and wingtips that face downward, a feature borrowed from Boeing's attempt at a similar aircraft in the past, called the Pelican. The Pelican was a plane proposal in the early 2000s, far ahead of its time, as it was conceptually everything the Lifter X plane is looking to be. A giant cargo, sea-skimming, land-running airplane that could deliver huge supplies to troops at every corner of the globe. And like the Lifter X, the Pelican II was going to achieve this tribrid ability via the all-too-revolutionary wing-in-ground effect. The wing and ground effect operates on the basic principle that the closer the wings of an aircraft operate to a surface, usually a water surface, the less drag it feels. In addition to this aerodynamic benefit, a layer of air pressure trapped between the surface of a body of water and the wings of an aircraft provides a cushion and prevents the aircraft from crashing into the water and ultimately resulting in an aircraft that can skate just over the water surface. It also allows for more efficient fuel consumption that enables the aircraft to travel significantly farther. And with less energy required to transport cargo, aircraft operating on wing in ground effect can be designed to be huge, very huge. They can carry massive payloads in a single flight, enabling entire battalions and convoys to be transported to the front lines in a fraction of the time it would take otherwise. With all of these to benefit, the Soviet Union also conducted extensive research and development into wing and ground effect aircraft. The Soviets designed and built several wing and ground designs, including the Lund class vehicle, which was 240 feet long, weighed 400 tons, could carry up to 100 tons of cargo, and remains the only wing and ground effect vehicle to ever be operationally deployed. But it couldn't fly. Neither could it operate during high tide sea states making it more of a warship than anything else, but a weak, feeble one. After three years of service, it was retired in 1990, and so was the concept of the wing and ground effect on vehicles. That was until 2002 when Boeing introduced their Pelican concept, and then 20 years after that, when DARPA would develop a brand new experimental plane called the Liberty Lifter X to become the most capable wing and ground effect vehicle in history. 
Liberty Lifter X Capabilities According to DARPA, the Liberty Lifter program aims to demonstrate a leap in operational capability by designing, building, floating, and flying the long-range, low-cost Lifter X, capable of a seaborne strategic and tactical heavy lift. The resulting vehicle would be some sort of large flying boat similar in size and capacity to the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III transport aircraft that meets the Department of Defense's heavy lift requirement of 100 tons minimum. The vehicle would be capable of taking off and landing in the moderate stormish waters of Sea State 4 and sustain on-water operation through the stormy waves of Sea State 5. And when it isn't operating from water, it operates from land, making it less dependent on seaports than ships and airports than planes, while being both in some way. In terms of in-motion capabilities, the Lifter X is expected to be capable of 7,480 miles of extended flight, either in ground effect mode where the aircraft is as close as 100 feet to the water surface, or out of ground effect mode where it flies at higher altitudes up to 10,000 feet above sea level. All of these, uncommon as they are, would still manage to come at an affordable cost, since the Lifter X would be fabricated in ways similar to ships, and ship fabrication has perfected the art of low-cost building. The program is currently in its design phase, which in itself has two smaller phases, which we'll refer to as Phase 1 and Phase 2. During Phase 1, DARPA will work with both finalist teams and Department of Defense stakeholders to refine the Liberty Lifter designs, with particular attention to operational needs and operating concepts. The Phase 1 contract awards are for an 18-month period of performance, with 6 months of conceptual design work and 9 months of design maturation, culminating in a preliminary design review. There will be an additional 3 months for manufacturing tests and review. After review, the winning design would continue into Phase 2, which, if on schedule, should coincide with mid-2024. In Phase 2, detailed design continues, along with manufacturing and demonstration of a full-scale Lifter X, which will then have to survive roughly five years of flight testing. After testing, testing, and more testing, the Liberty Lifter X becomes the Liberty Lifter as it transforms from an experimental plane into an operational one, which is one thing Boeing was unable to achieve in its previous go at a similar project with Pelican, although the Pelican was everything any military could ask for. Stretching the length of a football field, a wingspan of 500 feet, a wing area of more than an acre, and a record-breaking payload capacity of up to 2.8 million pounds, the Pelican was designed many times larger than the Globemaster, which the Lifter X is supposed to imitate in size. It was almost twice the size of and carried five times more cargo than the Antonov AN-225 Maria, which held the title of world's largest plane until it was destroyed during the invasion of Ukraine. Had the Pelican been a success, it would have been the biggest bird in the history of aviation by a million miles. What was the need for a plane as large as the Pelican? Well, its designers were trying to solve a problem. During the design process of the Pelican, the designers in the Phantom Works division of Boeing started working on solutions for the United States Armed Forces' objective of moving thousands of troops, weapons, military equipment, and provisions to a battle scene faster such as successfully deploying an army brigade of 3,000 troops and 7,300 tons of equipment within four days, instead of the three to six months it used to require. To meet the requirements of the military, Boeing considered large blimps and dirigible airships, but ultimately went with the wing-in-ground-effect airplane named the Pelican that had, in addition to its impressive payload capacity, a useful cruise speed up to 360 miles per hour, a service ceiling of 25,000 feet, and a maximum range of 12,000 miles. The Liberty Lifter, which can be seen as Boeing's second go if Boeing manages to win the DARPA program, is a more modest craft than the Pelican, but it has the benefits of decades of advancement in technology that enable it to operate in ways that the Pelican could only dream of. Taking off from the seas, for instance, or being namesake with the Statue of Liberty. But according to experts, a name change could happen unless you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do so now for the sake of the Liberty Lifter. Thanks for watching.